Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So, okay, maybe I should cut this out? What happened? Resource not found. What? Oh, that, okay, there we go. Ignore that. Uh, rerun, rewind, here we go. Hey everyone, <laughs> how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So, the last time we left off, what did we do the last time we left off? I'm sure it was super exciting. Um, I remember saying we were going to work on text, which guess what? We're going to do that next episode. I promise this time. But there was something that came up in the comments a few times going back to the videos and looking at the comments. And first off, I want to shout out to everyone that's helping other people in the comments when they have issues because I can't get to everything. I know it seems like the channel's not that big, but believe it or not, there's actually a decent amount of comments between all like 70 videos that happen every day. Um, so text next episode, shout out to the people that have been helping out in the comments. I really appreciate that. What we're going to do this time is we're going to, I won't say fix, but we're going to get some uh, diagnostics for an issue that I see a lot in the comments, which is performance. Um, I've always been, uh, accepting that there, you know, could possibly be some performance issues, especially since we're not uh, doing any kind of garbage collection. We're not deleting any of the bullets or enemies that we're not using anymore. For instance, if I were to run the game here, uh, I placed on a tower or two, um, our enemies, when they go off the screen here, I believe we just don't draw them anymore. So we're not actually deleting them. Our, our bullets as well, when they hit an enemy or when they miss and go off the screen, we just don't draw them anymore. Or actually, when they go off the screen, we might still be drawing them. But if they hit an enemy, we just we don't draw them anymore, but we don't actually delete them. Uh, so what that means is as the game goes on longer and longer, we are, remember the way we draw all of our enemies and all of our towers and all of our bullets is with a for loop that goes through every bullet we've ever created and finds its position and draws it. So as the game goes longer and longer, this uh, array list of bullets um, and enemies is getting bigger and bigger. So it's taking longer and longer for the computer to iterate through all of those. Um, so obviously we will get to a point where we delete them, but people have been saying that they've been having performance issues uh, already, like really bad ones, like the game crashing. So I decided to test that, and what I did was I, uh, last night, just loaded up this map with towers on every single square, and I can do it right now, and I let it run for, I don't know, maybe like 10 minutes, and I, I didn't notice anything. I created a FPS counter, which is what we're going to be doing this episode, that tracks our frames per second. Um, and it was at 60 consistently, which is what we're updating at with uh, LWJGL. And I checked it 20 minutes later, still no issues. Minimized to put in the background. And then a little bit later, my computer, uh, it didn't crash, but like Java crashed. And, you know, I stopped paying attention to it for a while and it obviously built up. So what I want to do this episode is make an FPS counter that can track our frames per second. I just want to mention that I have it written down somewhere. I'm like old school and write stuff down on paper and then I can't find it when I need it. Um, okay. So when I was trying to figure out how long it would take me to get performance issues last night, I got to 54,000 cash. Uh, so I think we start at quite a bit. Start at 185 or so. 200 actually and built a few towers. And I went all the way down to zero because I built towers everywhere. Um and killing an enemy for five each time. I got to 54,000 before I actually had any performance issues. But I understand that I was on a gaming PC uh, where I record and a lot of people are writing this on laptops or you know MacBooks or what have you. So you might run into performance issues quicker than I would. So what we're gonna do this time is we're gonna make that FPS counter and I'd be curious in the comments if people could let me know uh, the people that are having issues or even if you're not having issues about what your FPS is about how far into the game, so I can kind of track down how long people have until they're running into these issues. Uh, obviously, it might not, oops, just hit the mic. It might not look like I'm getting great FPS when I do this, because first off, the video you're watching is in 30 FPS, even though I'm seeing it in 60. And then also I'm running recording software and audio recording software, which can bog down the, the CPU quite a bit and the RAM. So let's go ahead and start. I know I've been talking a lot. Uh, we're gonna go to the state manager, and this is where Pretty much all of our work today is going to be done. In fact, in the game class, we're quick. Let's just get this out of the way. Uh, I was going through. We don't need this anymore. Uh, I remember 
I said just to comment it out and not delete it just in case, but we're at a point now where we don't actually need these lines anymore. So in case you still had those, just go ahead and delete those. Uh, we also, because of that, don't need access to the button class anymore since we're just interacting directly with the UI instead um, via the quick add function that adds the button for us. And that's scared of the warning in the game class. And what's in Wave Manager? What do we have in here? Times the last wave. Uh, we're not using that right now because we're starting immediately afterwards. So that's fine. We'll do that later. All right, so in the state manager class, we are going to make a couple uh, new variables here to track our frames per second. The first one is going to be a variable type that we haven't actually used yet in this series. It's called long. And it is kind of intuitive what it means. Public static long. And we're going to call it next second. Set it equal to system dot get current. Oh. Come on, get, oh, it's not get, dot current time in milliseconds. We're gonna add a thousand to that, okay? So public static long, uh, first off it's public static because that's what most of this class is. All of our variables are static, all of our methods are static and we access it from different classes and pass stuff in. It's kind of like the overarching um, handler for our game. So public static and then long, we haven't used before. It's pretty much like an int except it can just hold uh, longer numbers, right? Uh, the reason that you identify it that way is because a long takes up more system memory on your computer than an integer does. So you don't really wanna designate a variable as a long if it's just gonna hold numbers like 12 or 30, you know? This is uh, thousands and thousands high. So we're setting next second equal to system dot current time in milliseconds plus a thousand. So pretty much we're just setting it equal to the next second after the one right now that we set this at. And current time milliseconds obviously just gets the current time from your computer. Uh, after that, we're going to use some integers, public static int frames in the last second, set to zero for default, public static oops, int frames in current second equals zero. Now there's a few different ways that we could be tracking the FPS of our game. Uh, this one just kind of made the most sense with the system that we, or the setup that we currently have. Uh, there's other ways where we could do some math based on the amount of time that passes each frame, but instead we're gonna be counting the frames per second. Uh, that might seem intuitive, but let's just go and get to it. At the bottom of our update here, Remember, we run update every time we do anything, right? Because this is what updates the menu or the game or the editor. So this is guaranteed to run every time our game updates. It's directly from our boo class that updates the state manager. At the bottom of our update, after the case statement, but inside of the update method, we're going to make another variable, another long, called current time equals system dot current time milliseconds. And we're going to say if current time is greater than next second. And inside this if statement, we're gonna say next second plus equals 1000 again, and frames in last second is equal to frames in current second and frames in current second equal to zero. And outside of this if statement, we're just gonna go frames in current second, oops, plus plus. All right, now let's take a look at what we just did. Uh, I went kind of quick and I didn't explain it line by line because I already had in my head what we were gonna be doing overall. So I just wanted to kind of get it out there before I forgot. Uh, remember we set these up here, frames in last second and frames in current second is what we're tracking. It's both set to zero. Now, every single time the game updates, we make a new variable called current time and just gets the current time in milliseconds. Um, if current time is greater than next second. So remember next second is always set, or at least at the start, is set to the second ahead of the present, right? If it's a second later, then we set next second another second ahead. So this right here just pretty much ensures that the loop keeps going forever. If our current time ever matches up to the next second, then we move the next second another second ahead. That's all we're doing right now. Uh, we're using a thousand because it's in milliseconds. So a thousand milliseconds is one second. 
uh, frames in last second equal frames in current second, and frames in current second equal zero. Uh, this would make more sense when we look at this line right here. So this is an if statement, right? We're saying if our current time has caught up to the next second, then do this stuff. Otherwise, or I guess in addition to, frames in current second is up one. So pretty much we're saying in the span of one second, uh, however many times we update, we're gonna increase this variable, frames in current second, okay? And when we finally get past that second, we're kind of resetting everything. We're setting the last second to the frames we got and the current second to zero or restarting. And then we're setting next second uh, ahead another thousand milliseconds. Okay, so if anyone has any questions about that, feel free to uh, ask me in the comments, but we're gonna try that out real quick. Of course, right now, nothing has changed in our game because we're not printing out or drawing the string. Next episode, we drawing the string. In fact, speaking of next episode, you guys can check it out right now if you're watching this on YouTube at patreon.com slash indie programmer. Plug, 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 plug. I have some written down stuff I wanted to actually talk about here. I need to sneak it into these episodes. I can't make a separate video. You guys won't watch it. I feel like it's important that you guys know it. Anyways, frames in current second plus plus. After that, we're going to print out system.out.println. I know, we haven't done this in a while, right? Uh, and we won't anymore when we draw strings next episode. Patreon.com slash programmer. All right. I'm going to call, actually we'll do quotes afterwards. We're just going to print out frames in last second plus FPS. Pretty simple, right? Um, oh, you know what I didn't mention? Oh, it's because I'm using the UFOs here. Anyways, I'm going to move this over here. Obviously, we're going to frame drop when I move this because we're not getting any frames, uh, but it'll catch up. 60 FPS. That is what I'm getting uh, with recording software and audio recording software. I'd like to know what you guys are getting both at the start of your game as well as uh, later on into the game with like a bunch of towers and stuff to see what the disparity is between my performance and the average indie programmer viewer um, because that will affect how quickly uh, we start working on performance increases and optimization and stuff like that. Uh, it dipped down to 43 real quick. Again, I think it's because of the recording software I have. But yeah, just uh, let me know what you're getting with that. I also wanted to mention real quick, I want to change in the game class again. That's why I had it open. I totally forgot. That was the huge error I had here at the beginning. If you guys remember that blunder. Uh, I downloaded another texture. I'm going to start adding some more textures to the game because it's getting kind of stale. 70 episodes later, looking at the same thing, right? Enemy floating one so this texture was part of a free texture pack online and i kind of just spruced it up i added a shadow on the bottom and a little gloss on the top left if you can see that it used to be kind of flat and if you guys watch these tutorials you know how much i love shadows right shadow right here shadow under the tower shadow under the enemies um anyways you can download this texture in the description i did not make it uh the website you can get it from is kenny.nl which i'll have a link in the description as well this guy makes free textures or this group of people make free textures for use and uh very cool of them might incorporate some more of theirs i've been looking around uh if you guys find any cool textures you think might fit in our game then feel free to let me know but anyways uh if you want the shadowy and glossy texture that i improved or not improved but i changed uh they'll be on patreon.com as well uh, last thing I want to mention is, let's see, next episode we do text. Okay, yeah, so next episode we do text on patreon.com right now. Uh, oh, I'm working on the website. If you guys follow me on Twitter, you know. Uh, indieprogrammer.com. It's actually online right now. I didn't keep it private like most people do. So if you want to check it out, it literally is like nothing right now. It's just a brand new website. So there's no content and the theme is probably changing and all the colors and stuff. But if you want to see it as a work in progress, then feel free to check it out. I'll probably make a video when it's actually worth looking at. Um, my goal is I want to incorporate a Patreon login system into that so that you can have access to additional maybe text-based tutorials or uh, some like code snippets and stuff that'd be harder to do without a website. And also I want to maybe add um, a guest programmer, guest contributor to this channel. So let me know what you guys think of that. There might be another programming series happening concurrently with this one um, by another software engineer. All right, that's all for this episode. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you all next time on Indie Programmer.